Hello, and welcome to our integration demo with Hyrasmus and Aloha ABA. I'm Amy Cook, a BCBA and community manager for Hyrasmus, and I'm excited to share how you can optimize your ABA organization with this seamless integration. We will start with some brief introductions from our fabulous speakers today. Tina, can you share a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thanks, Amy. Um, hey, guys, I'm Tina Clauber. I am coming here from the Aloha side. I work in business development here at Aloha, and I also help out with the customer success side. So customer success side, I'm super involved in our current customers and then business development side, all of the potential customers seeing if it's a good fit for the Aloha platform. Um, before I came to Aloha, I worked as a regional trainer for RBTs in an East Coast ABA company, um, so I'm familiar with the ABA industry from a clinical standpoint as well. And then coming into Aloha, I learned all of the fun billing things in the background that I just had no idea existed. So now I can kind of see it as a full circle of everything that's going on within your ABA business. Um, Amy, I'll go ahead and pass it back to you so we can introduce Val as well. Awesome. And thank you. Now we'll have Valeria introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Blair, I guess. I'm a BCBA, and I've been working in the field for, I don't want to say so long, so you don't think I'm old, but I've been working in the field for quite a while. Um, and then I became a BCBA about three years ago. Uh, and then I worked in the clinic setting before I had my son. And then after I had my son, I found Hyrasmus, and it's been a joy to be working as a customer success representative in Hyrasmus. Okay, go ahead, Amy. Back yes. to you. Yes, thank you both. Before we start the demo, we want to share a little bit more about us. Hi, Rasmus was inspired by our founder's son, Rasmus, who was diagnosed with autism early in his life. Our goal is to help deliver the highest quality behavioral therapy services to 1 million children with autism by helping the people who help them, behavior analysts, techs, teachers, parents, and clinical directors. We provide the best clinical platform so you can focus on the child in front of you. Now I'll hand it over to Tina to share a little bit about Aloha ABA. Thanks, Amy. So Aloha ABA, we focus on product, we focus on service. Our owners have been in the industry for quite some time, and our goal is going to be to simplify your workflow so that you and your staff um, can focus on what is important, which is, of course, providing that ABA therapy to kiddos. So that is what we're specializing in. We're here to support you, and we're here to help, here to help you grow your practice. Awesome. Thanks, Tina. I want to share how our partnership started. Our customers were looking for a practice management solution that was simple to use with Hyrasmus and at a fair price point. We wanted to spend all of our energy on the clinical teams and supporting them in improving outcomes for kiddos. So when we found Aloha ABA, the match was obvious, a winning solution for our customers to have the best of both worlds with the clinical and operational sides. Aloha ABA and Hyrasmus continue to meet on a weekly basis and are committed to making sure our customers receive the very best support. We are now going to start our integration demo and we will have time for questions at the end. I'd like to share that we will only be highlighting the integration portion. Both Hyrasmus and Aloha ABA have a comprehensive platform, so we're happy to connect with you in the future if you want to learn more. Tina, can you please start us off? Absolutely. So as Amy was saying, today we're going to be showing you the full process of how Hyrasmus and how Aloha are working together. So we're going to be starting with the Aloha side, and we're going to build out a client profile together, add an appointment to our schedule, take our data over on Hyrasmus, create our session note over on Hyrasmus, and then we're gonna come on over back to Aloha and actually bill out our appointment. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. All right, so I am logged in to our Aloha demo site. What you are looking at right now would be the very first thing that you would see when you would log into Aloha, which is known as your dashboard. Your dashboard is going to give you a quick glance at what is going on within your site. So to point out a few of these widgets to you, we have our expiring qualifications widget, flagging you of any staff qualifications set to expire in a certain time frame. So we have 30, 60, 90 day time frames here. You can click on it, get more information about what those qualifications are. 
We also have a widget for expiring authorization. So flagging of any auths coming up on expiration in that 30, 60, 90 day timeframe as well. Again, click on it, get more info. Another widget that we really like to point out in the dashboard is the aging report widget. This is a really important tool just to give you a glance at what's going on with billing right when you get into your site. So this is showing your amount outstanding versus your amount billed from month to month. So your amount outstanding bar, that pink bar should be shrinking as you're getting payments back into Aloha because hopefully you're not having as much outstanding as what you have billed. So this is giving you a quick glance saying, hey, am I getting payments back as I am expecting? Billing summary is your amount billed from month to month. Canceled appointment summary is going to be your cancellations that you build out. This is tracking them month to month. And then these bottom three widgets are going to be pertaining to the user that is logged in. Everything that you're going to see today, including the dashboard, can be set up based on permissions. So if you were a BT or an RBT logging in, you would have your site built out based on what's most relevant to your job title. And then same thing goes for any other roles that you might have within your company. Okay, so right now I want to focus on building out a client in Aloha. I've already created a pair and I've created a staff on the back end. So to add a new client, I'm gonna go over to my client icon. And we're going to jump into the client list and add a new one. You can already see the theme that we're going for here. <laughs> okay, so my client that I'm going to be building out with you today is going to be named Charlie Brown. Hopefully everyone's familiar with good old Charlie. I'm going to go ahead and just put in some basic background info for Charlie, and then we'll jump into the actual profile. And we're even going to upload a photo. Once I have my basic information in for Charlie, that's taking me right into Charlie's profile on Aloha. This is what a profile would look like. So first thing that you're noticing is these cards. Your first card is your personal info card. All of your basic information lives here. Everything that I just put in is shown over there. Your edit tools are always gonna be these pencils. So if you need to go back and edit anything, you can obviously go back and edit. Custom fields. This is gonna be a card that you can use to customize your site and make it your own. So everything that I'm highlighting here is something that I built out on the demo site, but you can build out whatever you need to track here. So these are just some common ones. Maybe we wanna put some things about things he's allergic to you. Maybe we want to talk a little bit about how to get to his house. Whatever I want to put on his profile, I can create a custom field and it'll live here. Contacts is the next card. Contacts is going to be any contact relationships that you can hook up to Charlie. This could be mom, dad, grandma. This could also be school teacher, PT, OT speech. Client assignments is if I want to assign any staff to this particular kiddo's case or assign any clinical teams that involve this client. Teams are gonna be based on however you wanna group people together in your company. Assigned staff is really helpful for starting to build out that HIPAA compliance. So then you can say, hey, this person can only view kiddos that they are assigned to, to kind of build out those permissions. Next tab up here I wanna to jump to is the authorization tab. So in the authorization tab, I want you to keep in mind, I already built out my payer on the back end. So I am going to select my payer here and I'm gonna put in his policy information. As I'm putting in this policy information, I wanna to talk to you about what I did when I built out this payer beforehand. This payer was something that I would have built out with the billing codes, with the charge rate, with the contract rates, any minimum requirements for staff that might meet those services, any modifiers, all that would have been built out when I built out this payer. Now I'm pulling this payer into my client, building out the policy, and then I'm going to actually put the authorization in this client's profile. So I have my policy. Now I'm building out that auth. As I'm building out that auth, I'm going to pull over those services that I built it on the back end with my payer. So the billing code, the modifiers, the charges, the contract rate, all that comes with it when I type in the service over here. So as I'm adding in this authorization, I'm going to put my auth number if I have one. I can always upload my auth as a reference point as well. 
I'm going to put in the date range of my authorization. And then I'm pulling over that service. So first service I'm pulling over is assessment. It knows what billing code is on the back end. It knows the charges on the back end. I'm going to go ahead and put in my allowed limit. This is however your authorization is written. In my example, it's written in units and auth, but maybe your authorization is written a little different. You can put it in however it's supposed to be put in. I'm going to then default my rendering provider place of service and service facility. These three sections are going to be defaulted at this auth level, but they can be changed at the appointment level and they can be changed at the billing level. And I'll give you a peek at what that looks like when we get to that point. But defaulting, defaulting it here is going to be um, saving you some clicks when you actually go to schedule for this service. So I know that in my typical place of service, the rendering provider is X for assessment. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here so I don't have to select it every single time. I'm going to add in my next service here. We're going to geo direct. Build out my off limit. Maybe for direct, it's going to typically be in home. And I'm just going to save it with those two services for now. So now I have my authorization put in for my kiddo. If I needed to upload any files, that's a great place to house in the cabinet. This is just like a physical filing cabinet where you can categorize it based in folders, choose your files, set permissions as to who can view it. Then I want to jump into the schedule and actually schedule with Charlie Brown. So jumping in to my schedule, I already have an existing schedule that you can see has populated here on the scheduling screen. I want to point out what you're looking at here so you can kind of get an idea of what these symbols are and how to read an Aloha calendar. So in your schedule, the first thing I want to point out are these little icons listed on the left-hand side. These icons here are going to be telling you the type of appointment that it is. So a billable appointment is always going to have this clipboard with text in it. That is your billable icon. We also do handle group billable appointments, so you might notice multiple clipboards with text over here. Drive time appointments are going to be a car. Break time appointments is a coffee cup. And then non-billable appointments are going to have a blank clipboard with text or without text in them. And then this one has multiple because it's a group non-billable. looks like a team meeting here. To the right, we have our status bubbles. Our status bubbles are letting us know, is the appointment ready to be billed? In Aloha, we call this completed. So a filled in status bubble here is saying, yes, the appointment is ready to be billed. It has been completed. It has been rendered. An open circle means it has not yet been completed or not yet has been rendered, not ready to be billed. Half circles for those group appointments. So some have completed, some have not. And then if you notice this appointment over here, there's an exclamation point where the status bubble is. This exclamation point is letting you know that there's some sort of validation error with the appointment. So when I clicked save on this appointment, it would throw me the exact error there. And then it would remind me here on the outside that I need to go in and fix that appointment before I can complete it. Maybe my validation error would be the staff doesn't meet the minimum qualification for that service, or maybe I'm over my off limit, but something needs to go back in and change it before I can actually go and complete it. Okay, so let's actually create an appointment for Charlie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the appointment or on the calendar. I'm going to add in my staff. I'm going to select my client. So I found Charlie here. And then what's going to happen is our authorized services for Charlie are automatically popping up. And these are the two authorized services that I just put in the authorization. So it's not letting me schedule with something I don't have an authorization for. It's also only allowing me to schedule for those authorized services that are within the date range that I put in the auth. So let's say that I'm scheduling for direct service. I'm just going to select direct service. Now I have my staff, my client, and I have my start and my end time put in. If I needed to repeat this, I could always go over to the repeat tool over here. And I can repeat it very similar to Google Calendar here. Um, the only difference is we would we can end it on the authorization end date. So if I wanted to just schedule directly through the auth, then I can just click on that. It remembers what I put in the authorization end date. And then you can just schedule it all the way through.
Okay, so now that I have my appointment built out, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to pass it back over to Val so she can open up Pyrasmus and kind of walk you through what it's going to look like on her end. Awesome. Thank you, Tina. Okay, so I am going to share my screen with you guys now and show you what it looks like on the Hyrasmus side. So when you log into Hyrasmus and your account is linked to the Aloha, uh, what you're going to see initially is here, I am on my own homepage. So your staff will click on their names and they will have their own homepage where they will see pending activities. If there is, in this case, a missing note or a missing signature. And here below, they're going to see all their appointments. And you can see here that I have appointments with Sally, with Linus, Snoopy. Uh, you don't see any appointments with Charlie because Charlie is not yet linked. So that's what we're going to do together now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on clients. I'm going to find my client here. So I have Charlie. And Charlie was created on the back end before we, we started our demo. And I'm going to click on link to Aloha. So now we need to wait a little bit while the information gets transferred. And there we go. So all you have to do is select your client and you're going to save. So now you see that it changed here. Instead of link to Aloha, it says edit Aloha BA client reference. So this tells me that it's being linked. So now that I save, everything that Tina did for Charlie in Aloha will be automatically transferred over. So I'm going to click here on my select client. And here's where I'm going to have a drop down menu with all my clients. So let's select Charlie Brown. And you see that the appointment that Tina uh, is scheduled, it's already showing here under my session. So before we started our demo, I went ahead, I created the session, I added some programs. And you can see here all the programs that are active on the session. Today is the 12th and it's supposed my appointment is supposed to start at 1 p.m. Now, we know sometimes things change, schedules change, staff change, right? So even though it is scheduled for 1 p.m. and I am right now in Central Time, so it is 12.20 for me, I can still go ahead and click on Start Session. And every time you have an appointment that is not link uh, on that exact time, you are going to see this little um, notice here. Also on this preparation page, you can write a message to your therapist, anything that is relevant to that client, a reminder, or you know anything that is um, check the protocol modifications, anything that you want to make sure that your staff knows. On this preparation page, your staff will be able to click on each of the programs they can read the instructions. If you have any picture or any PDF attached, you can have uh, you can check those out here as well. Another cool thing when you're creating programs, you have the ability to add a video. So this could be just an instructional video, just explaining how to run the program, or you know you can uh, do a model, a role play with a colleague, and you can write your instructions as well. When you click on targets, you can see which targets are open, if there's any targets mastered, and if you need to uh, collect or gather any material before your session, you will know exactly what you're gonna be working on. If you click on history, you will see previous sessions. You can see the data that was taken. When I click here on my numbers, I can see the percentage so I can have an idea on how well my client is doing. And if I write any protocol modification, that note will be written here. So every time you make a change on a program, whether you are uh, adding something, removing something, a target, instructions, the system is going to ask if you want to write that modification. So now I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on the start session. My session timer starts automatically here on the left side. On the top, I can pin programs for that quick and easy access. So anything that is uh, maybe a behavior reduction or an interval, a duration, anything that you're going to be running throughout the session. And to collect the data, all you have to do is click on your target. So here I have this frequency. I'm clicking and my numbers are going up. If I make a mistake or if I click too much, I can click on this undo. So every program will have this option to undo that last trial. For my duration here, I can start my timer just by clicking on that target. And I can just stop it also by clicking on it. Now, while I'm running my duration program, I can collect data points on other programs as well, and my timer will keep going. Also, if you notice that every time I click here to start, my timer on the bottom starts from zero. But here on the top corner, the timer keeps going. 
So at the end of my session, I'm going to have a trial by trial duration, and I'm also going to have the total duration for that day. Another cool thing that you can do in Hierasmus is to have different types of targets within the same program. So for example, on my routine with arriving at the center, as soon as my client arrives, I can start my timer and then we're gonna do his uh, hanging backpack. And here's my prompt level template. So every time I click on a target, I will see the options that I have. And this is highly customizable. So you can change the words, you can change the colors, you can change how many items you have here. So let's say I had to do a model today. Now here I have a duration target, I have a DTT target, and here you can see I have a backwards chain. So when I have a backwards chaining, you can see what my initial targets are. But since they are in waiting, I cannot collect the data on them. And then I'll come here and I'll collect data on the targets that are either in acquisition or mastered. And once we are done with our chain, I can come back here and stop my timer. During my session, I can write program specific notes. So let's say, for, for example, today, uh, my client forgot his lunchbox and maybe I thought I should report this. I can click on instructions, I can read the instructions, I can check the targets, check the history. So basically everything that you do on that preparation page, you have access here under instructions as well. During the session, you can also take pictures or record videos. And you can also start typing in your session notes. So let's say my client went to the bathroom, I'm gonna quickly here say who was present in my session and client status. Now, at any moment, I can just minimize this and I can come back to the session note. I can, uh, to see the other programs available in the session, I can click on this tab here on the bottom and just select which program that I want. I can use my arrows that says next program, so I can go back and forth here. And a third option is by clicking on this square, you will see all the programs that are available in your client session. And it's just a matter of preference because whichever way you have, you can still click and collect your data points. Here I have a cool example of how you can have your um, targets divided into different categories. So for my receptive ID, I can do receptive ID of colors, shapes, and school items all on the same screen. And again, all I have to do is click on my target and I will collect my data points. Uh, here I have another task analysis and this is just a total chain. So I have some targets in acquisition, some targets are mastered, and you have different ways of creating different types of programs in Hierasmus. When you're done with your session, you're going to click on finish session. And that session note that I started writing, it's going to pop up exactly where I left off. So then I'm just going to continue and you can create your own session note template. So I'm doing my summary here. And I can have the data being pulled. So maybe I want to have the data for all my programs. Maybe I don't want to have data uh, pulled into my session note. That's your decision. And you can make time adjustments if you need to. So today we started our session at 1220. And let's say we're going to finish our session at 3 p.m. If you need to, you can make those times adjustments. And this is what your session notes going to look like. So I have my client's information, the session information. And like I said, the session note template, you can create your own with whatever information you need. Now, as soon as I sign my note, everything is saved. I don't need to click save anywhere. On your session note template, you can make signatures that are required. So in this case, I have mom signature required. So we're gonna just pretend I am mom right now and I am signing for mom. Uh, now I see here that my session note is green. So it means my session note is completed and I have all the required signatures. I have this icon here showing that the session is linked to an appointment in Aloha. And you can see that the session was scheduled for 1 p.m., but I actually started a little bit earlier. With everything that is required being met, I have the option to send this session note to Aloha. So I'm gonna click on send now. And then I will send it over to Tina now so she can show you guys what it looks like on uh, Aloha side. Awesome, Val, thank you. Let me go ahead and reshare my screen with you guys. Some things have been starting to happen in Aloha, so I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Okay, I am resharing my screen. So first thing I want to point out is this session moved a little bit. And the reason why it moved a little bit is because the times have changed, as Val was mentioning over into the Hierasmus end. 
Another thing that happened is this little symbol has appeared, this little check mark with the like lightning that's green. What that symbol is telling me is that I do have a session note attached to this appointment. So from an outside view, I can already see, hey, I have a session note that's attached to this appointment and the green means that the times match. So it's synced that time over. Let me go ahead and jump into the actual appointment here. And I wanna show you some stuff that happened on the inside as well. Okay, so in the session notes tab, I also see a direct link has now populated. And if I click on that link, I have a new tab that has opened and it automatically shows me everything that Val had just did on her end. So it directly links to that session note um, right in Aloha right there. It pulled all that info over. The times also synced here. So you can see that their times have synced as well as Val's signature synced over with her um, date and time, as well as the client's family signature, as well as the date and time. So all of those things automatically happened when Val clicked send from Hyrasmus' side. The only thing I would have to do is like a BT or an RBT in Aloha is come in and mark the session as complete here. If I hit save, then you can see that the status bubble is going to be a filled in circle and that means it is ready to be built. You can see it right there. If I single, oh, also with the status bubble of auto completion, we are actually in, um, do, we're in production for having this status bubble automatically complete for you when Val sends over the session notes. So that is in beta testing right now, and it's projected to be deployed to our live customers by the end of this month. What that means for you guys is that if you were a BT or if you were an RBT, then once you do everything you need to do over on the Hyrasmus side, you are done. You do not have to log into Aloha and mark anything in Aloha. So that is definitely something we're excited for so that your BTs and RBTs can kind of stay in one platform. They don't have to jump back and forth. Okay, so jumping back into what we're looking at here in Aloha, if I single click on this appointment, I can show myself an authorization summary. This is gonna be so, so helpful in planning out your authorization, making sure you're utilizing it to the fullest. So you can see here, for direct service, my authorization that I put in was 1600 units and off. The date range for my auth is right here. And then of those 1600 units, how many are scheduled? Not that many. And then how many are not scheduled? And then of those that are scheduled, how many are completed versus not completed? Since this is my only appointment, we don't have any not completed, but it would work the same way with that circle. And then if I double click in, that brings me back to this appointment screen that we were looking at prior. I'm gonna kind of give you a peek at what's going on in these tabs over here that we did not click on just yet. So billing tab is one of the tabs I wanna focus in on. Billing tab is everything that's gonna get pulled over into billing, which we will jump into in just a bit. Billing tab, you can see place of service, service facility, rendering provider. These three were the things that I defaulted at the auth level. But if I need to change them, I can super easily go in here and change them at this level as well. Modifiers can be defaulted at the payer service level, but they can also be selected at this level as well. Also, all of these things can be changed at the billing level, which I'll give you a peek at um, once we get to that point. And then billing minutes and units get pulled over from the appointment info tab, billing codes, diagnosis codes, rate and charges, they get pulled over based on how you set up your payer service and how you set up your authorization for that kiddo. The other tab I wanna zone in on is the supervision tab. So for supervision, this is if you are supervising an RBT for this appointment. This will help you keep track of that supervision and that minimum 5% that the BACB outlines. So how this works is if you are a BCBA, you are adding supervision to your appointment. Your name is going to populate in the supervisor, and then you'll add the RBT in the add staff section. What Aloha does is it records how much you're overlapping that RBT's appointment. Then you can run an RBT supervision log report right in Aloha and see where you're at with that minimum 5% requirement for the BACB. Okay, let's actually go into billing. So I am now a biller. I put on my biller hat. This is what we're going to do as a biller. Very first thing I want to do is jump into my billing manager screen. My billing manager screen is where I'm going to go to actually submit all of my claims. 
So first thing I wanna do is select my payer or payers that I wanna bill and the date range that I wanna bill out. Once I hit generate, all of my unbilled appointments are gonna be showing up here. First thing I wanna point out to you are these colored check boxes over on the left-hand side. An orange color checkbox is indicating that something is missing in that line. So if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what the error is that you need to fix. So this is the rendering provider. And if I look over at the rendering provider column, it's showing up orange there as well. Super easy to draw my eye to. I can just go over there and change it. Then that line turns green. And as you can see, green is meaning that nothing is missing within those appointment lines. This is a great place to scrub all of your data. So if I'm scrolling over and I'm noticing something that needs to be changed, now is the time to change it. So rendering provider, maybe I need to change. Uh, maybe I wanted to put in modifiers at this level. I can definitely do that. Same thing goes for places of service. Maybe my place of service changed for whatever reason. I can also bulk update multiple lines. So let's say that for this day, they have to like move to the school setting. I can just bulk update that by selecting my field, selecting the value that I want to change it to, and I can just update all those lines together. Scrolling over more, I can double check that my units are correct. If I need to add in taxonomy codes, are they added in? All of that information automatically gets pulled over into this billing manager screen. Now is the time to make all your changes. Make sure your info looks good because you don't want to send it out and then realize, oh, got to go, go do a corrected claim. That's going to put a little bit more work on you. So now is your time to kind of look it over and make sure that everything um, looks good. Once you are like, yes, everything looks great, what you'll do is you'll select all of the um, appointments that you're wanting to bill and you'll click on the process billing button. The first thing that happens when you click on the process billing button is it's gonna generate a CMS 1500 preview for you. That CMS 1500 preview is gonna be like your last minute check, making sure that everything looks good. Look, you can even see Charlie Brown's is the very first one it generated. All of the information I put in, if, if I actually saw this, I'd be like, oh, maybe I need to go back and fix that street address. But making sure that everything looks okay here, making sure all of my MPI numbers are in, et cetera, et cetera. I can just give myself a last minute glance there. And then this next time I click on process billing, that is when it will push it out to the clearing houses that we work with. So we work with Office Ally, and then we also have recently started working with Availity. We are testing out Availity with a few of our beta customers right now, but um, all the claims are going through, everything going good. We're just making sure as we get our payments back that everything works out before we push it out to everyone. So availability as well as Office Ally are where these can be sent to from the Aloha side. Once I have actually billed everything out, what will happen is all these appointments will no longer show up in Billing Manager, and instead they're going to show up in the AR Manager section. AR Manager is where you're going to go to actually review the claims that you sent. So this is where all of your balances are living. You can make sure that you're um, managing all of these claims as needed. So in AR Manager, we have our payers listed on the left. We have our balances listed on the right. And then these full balances are broken up into these aging buckets in the center. These aging buckets are letting you know how long it's been since you've billed. So that current bucket is all the balances that you've billed in less than 30 days. 30, 60 days since build, 60 and 90 days since build, et cetera. If I need to check on any of these balances, I can just double click into any of these balances and it'll show me all of the claims that make up that balance. Let's say that I need a call on this specific claim. I can just hit this little history icon and everything that I need to talk to the insurance company about to locate that claim is automatically up here. And then down here is my transaction log for this claim. So this transaction log follows me around Aloha. So anything that happens with that claim is automatically going to be recorded here. I can also add myself a manual note here and post it the transaction log. So let's say that um, I called the insurance company. They gave me a reference number. I want to record what was said. I can just put that here. So every time I look back on that claim, I know exactly what happened to it. I even have a reference number to refer to. And then double clicking into my claim, I can see the actual individual charge lines that make up that claim. If I'm ready to post my payment, then that is where my payment center is going to come in. With the payment center, anything that um, has an ERA, so any of your like insurance or Medicaid payers that you're billing through a clearinghouse will automatically come up here. You can double click on that ERA and click on our auto post button. 
If we can match up the payment to what we build out, then we'll be able to auto post it for you based on the lines of that ERA. So it matches up what the insurance company has paid and it transfers any balances as appropriate. So co-pays, co-insurances, deductibles will all transfer to the client responsibility. Our system matches about 85% of claims. And if you needed to manually match anything else, you can go in and manually match it. Um, you can also um, post manual payments here as well. So we are compatible with school districts. We can do private pay. We can do regional centers. So if any of those have that manual um, payment posting, you can go in and just manually apply your check to those appointments that you filled out as well. You can also always generate invoices here if needed. So let's say your kiddo has a copay, you can just generate an invoice for that copay. And then when they pay it, you come back in here and actually post the copay. So that is kind of how your billing cycle works on the Aloha side. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'll hand it back over to Amy so she can kind of recap this out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Val and Tina for showing us that seamless integration. Um, hold on just a second. And I have a special deal for you all as soon as I can get this back. Apologize, it's not letting me hit this button for some reason, but I'll just move this up. Okay, so we have a special deal when you sign up for both Hirasmus and Aloha ABA, you will receive a free upgrade to premium for Hirasmus for a year. And our premium is awesome. It adds a, some content library, also helps with supervision, telehealth features, uh, and much more on there. And then we also want to uh, stay connected. If you want to schedule a demo to have more information from Hirasmus or Aloha, you can go ahead and stay here. And if you want to email me directly as well, we just want to thank you so much for our time. We're going to stop the recording now, and then we will have time for additional to answer some additional questions. So let me stop our recording real quick. <laughs>